I am Anil Kumar. Let me thank my subscribers for taking keen interest in my videos and posting excellent questions. Now here are three trigonometric equations which we are going to solve. Let us try to understand the strategy which should be applied to solve these equations. Now the three equations are cos cube x equals to cos x, sin x minus 2 sin x cos x equals to 0 and 2 sin square x minus sin x minus 3 equals to 0. So in all this, remember, we are not given any restriction on domain. So all our answers should be general answers. Since these functions are periodic functions. So that is kind of important to understand. The technique which we are going to use is factoring. Perfect. So, so for the first equation, you can bring the terms together, factor cos x, and then you can solve. Here you can always factor sin x. This is a quadratic equation. So product of minus 6, sum of minus 1 will help you solve it. Perfect. So that is how we are going to solve. You may actually pause the video, copy these questions, solve, and then check with my solution. So let's begin one by one. So the very first example is cos cube x equals to cos x. Bringing cos x to the left side, I could write this as cos cube x minus cos x equals to zero. Now cos x can be taken as common. So what we get here is cos square x minus 1 equals to 0. Now there are two factors when multiplied giving us 0. So that means cos x should be equal to 0 and cos square x minus 1 could also be 0. So we get these conditions. When I say cos square x minus 1 equals to 0, it means cos square x is equal to 1. Right? So what is cos x equals to? Plus minus square root of 1. So cos x is equal to plus minus 1. This is important to understand. So we are looking for cos x equals to plus minus 1 and cos x equals to 0. Okay. These solutions are very simple if you look into the graph of cosine function, right? So let me sketch one for you. So let's say cosine function is kind of like this. So we are looking for all the zeros, which are these points. We are also looking for plus minus one values. Do you see that? All these values. They are part of our solution. So this is cos x. Well, this is zero and we know one full cycle is two pi this point here is pi, correct? That is pi by 2. This is 3 pi by 2 and so on, correct? These values are 1 and minus 1. So from here, cos x equals to 0 gives us the solution, these points, right? So which is pi by 2, 3 pi by 2, likewise. So odd multiples of pi by 2. So when I say cos x equals to 0, then x is equals to 2n plus 1 times pi by 2. Do you make sense where n belongs to integers? Do you get it? Since this graph extends kind of like this. So that is one part. Now let's look into the second one, which is, which is cos x equals to plus minus 1. So x is equal to what? So 1 at 0, pi, 2 pi, and so on, right? So it is n pi, correct? So n pi gives you all the values where n belongs to two integers, correct? So these are all the answers. 
But you could actually combine these two. If you see, right? If you see that, then odd multiples are zeros. Even multiples are ones, correct? So we could also combine these two, correct? So if you combine, what do you get? You get our answer as x equals to n pi by 2 n pi by 2. See, if I put n, n belongs to integers. So if I put n as 1, I get pi by 2. If I put it as 2, we get just pi. So we get the second point, 3, 4, 5, and so on. 0, of course, and negative numbers. So that becomes the solution for the first equation. So I hope that makes sense, right? So this is the general solution for cos cube x equals to cos x. Now let's take the second equation now. Which is sin x minus 2 sin x cos x equals to 0. Taking sin x common factor, I get 1 minus 2 cos x equals to 0. Now that gives us sin x equals to 0. And also we get 1 minus 2 cos x equals to 0. That means 2 cos x equals to 1 or cos x equals to half. Correct? So these are possible solutions. So let's look into these values. Sin x equals to 0. Okay, so the graph is kind of like this. So we are looking for general solution. Is it okay? So here, sin x equals to 0 that is n pi so so this part let me write down the answers very clear so when i say sin x equals to zero i'm saying x is equals to n pi where n belongs to integers clear now the other part is cos x equals to half now cos x half means you are either in quadrant one or in quadrant 4. That gives you half, right? You know the rule. All are positive here, sine, tan, and cosine. Positive half. The triangle which helps you to get the answer is 30, 60, 90. So here, this could be, I mean, this has to be pi by 3 to give you half cos value. Correct. So plus minus pi by 3. So this is plus pi by 3. This is minus pi by 3. Correct. So, so for cos x equals to half, we know x is equals to plus minus pi by 3. Now to make it general, so this value of pi by 3, which is kind of like this, let's, let's, draw it like this right so these values we're talking about they are repeated after every 2 pi correct after every 2 pi so let me add to n pi here where n belongs to integers doesn't make sense to you so that is how you're going to write the answer so clearly the answer is n pi and we could write just pi by 3. Well, you can write plus minus pi by 3 plus 2n pi, where n belongs to integers. Correct? Okay? So that becomes the solution of the given equation, and this is the general solution. The last equation here is the quadratic equation. So we'll solve by factoring 2 sine square x minus sine x minus 3 equals to 0. So to factor, we are looking for two numbers p and q whose product should be 2 times minus 3, which is minus 6, and whose sum should be minus 1. So the two numbers are 3 times 2 gives us 6 and also minus 1, so negative 3 and positive 2. So we'll split sine x. We could write this as 2 sine square x minus 3 sine x plus 2 sine x 
minus 3 equals to 0. Now we could take sin x common from the first two terms. We get 2 sin x minus 3 plus we have 2 sin x minus 3 equals to 0. Now 2 sin x minus 3 is common. So we are left with sin x plus 1 equals to 0. Now that means that 2 sin x minus 3 equals to 0. That means sin x is equals to 3 over 2. Now that is not possible, right? No solution. Because sin value is between plus and minus 1, correct? The last one here, sin x plus 1 equals to 0 means sin x equals to minus 1. And from the graph, you know when sin x is negative 1, right? Sin x is negative 1 for 3 pi by 2. And that is going to repeat, right? So, so that gives us x equals to 3 pi by 2 plus 2n pi, right? Where n belongs to integers. So that is how you could actually solve this question. So I hope, I hope that makes sense, right? So we did all the three questions following the simple technique of factoring. And I hope that works. Feel free to write your comments and share your views. And if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.